Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdale here again. In this presentation I'm going to continue my series of videos on partial differential equations. Now in previous videos we looked at Green's first identity and I told you that um, I'd be applying the identity to various problems involving partial differential equations. So that is the aim of this particular presentation, to apply Green's first identity to the following problem which is known as a boundary value problem. Now we've got uh, a partial differential equation known as Laplace's equation. Now sometimes the notation is abbreviated to this sort of nabla squared or this delta u, both um, of types of notation are used to abbreviate this left hand side. And we've also got some information about the solution u on the boundary of this um, two-dimensional region. So here we're just working in, say, the, the plane. Okay. Now, this kind of uh, boundary condition is known as a Dirichlet boundary condition, and the, um, the two types of information is known as a Dirichlet problem or a Dirichlet BVP, boundary value problem. Okay, so the um, uh, claim is that the problem 8-9 has at most one solution. So first of all, what does this mean? Well, it means that this uh, Dirichlet BVP has either one solution or no solution. Now what is the significance of that? Well, it means that if you're solving this problem and you manage to construct a solution, then you know it's the only solution to the problem, so you can stop looking for solutions. Okay, so I'm going to prove this using Green's first identity. Okay, now, um, I'll show you that in a minute, but let me just uh, um, show you the, the main sort of uh, train of thought here. We're going to let, say, V and W be two solutions to 8 and 9. Okay, what we're going to do is show that V is identically equal to W. So those two solutions must be one and the same solution. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, what we're going to do is look at the difference of these two solutions and show that um, the difference is identically equal to zero. So let's, let's um, denote the, solution, uh, the difference of the, the two solutions V and W by R. So our sort of aim has now slightly changed to show that R is identically equal to zero on, um, on the uh, region D, um, D or uh, the union of D and uh, the boundary of D. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, let's form a new boundary value problem. And we can do that using the linearity of my PDE. So let me show you what I mean. Okay, so if I compute, say, um, R sub XX and R sub YY, and then add them together, you're going to see a lot of cancellation. Now if I just sort of differentiate, the derivative is a linear operator, of course. Now by the subscripts, of course, I mean partial derivatives. Thus, if I um, say uh, write out the sum of the second order partial derivatives, then I get the following. Now if I sort of move them around, you'll see that because V is a solution to this problem on this set, then this plus this must be zero. Uh, minus. And similarly, because W is a solution to this problem, uh, this plus this must also be zero. Okay. All 
Okay, so now, basically R satisfies this equation up here. Well, what about uh, on the boundary? Well, again, if we restrict X and Y to the boundary of the, the uh, D, then V is G there and W is also G there. So V minus W will be G minus G, so it would be zero. All right, so now we have a boundary value problem for R. Now the differential equation is the same, but the boundary conditions are homogeneous. Okay. Okay, so we've reached a, 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 a critical point now in the, in the proof, and it's now time to, to get Green's identity into the mix. So this is Green's identity here. What we're going to do, so just, just perhaps think of it as this, is um, write down Green's identity with K and H both replaced by R. Okay, now here, of course, this is the gradient of H, this is the, the, the Laplacian of H. Um, so let's actually write that down. And we'll see that um, a lot of cancellation or, or simplification occurs. So let's apply Green's first identity. Uh, so let me just write out the identity so it's uh, nice and complete. Okay, there it is. And we're going to um, replace K and H with R. Okay, so if we do that, um, we'll have R grad R over here. And over here, we're going to have the following R times the Laplacian of R plus grad R dotted with itself. Okay, so now um, we can go back to the boundary value problem that we um, constructed for R and get some simplifications here. Firstly, remember this integral is around the boundary of R. This is a line integral. What do we notice about the integrand along the boundary? Well, r is equal to zero. So this is equal to zero on the boundary. So the whole um, integrand must be zero. What it means is the left-hand side disappears or vanishes. Let's move on to this right-hand side. We know that the Laplacian of r on d is identically equal to zero. So this must be zero. So this term will disappear. So, the left-hand side vanishes, this term disappears, essentially I'm left with one term on the right-hand side. So, we apply the BVT, a BVP for R, we obtain the following. Okay, zero equals following. Now, here we've got something dotted with itself. So I can write it in the following way. And in particular, the integrand is um, non-negative. 
And, th and d d this works for, for essentially all, all regions D. So what does it mean? You've got an integral of something that's non-negative that's always equal to zero. Well, this can only happen if the integrand is, is, is zero. Okay, so what is that? The square of a length essentially is zero. What does that mean? Well, it means that the length is zero. Okay, well, the length is zero if and only if what's inside the, these um, um, length symbols is zero. And, this, and remember, grad the gradient of R is a vector, so, so the gradient is the zero vector. So what does this mean? Remember the gradient is just a vector that has partial derivatives as its components. So the, both the r sub x and r sub y, the partial derivatives, must be zero. Now of course we're working on the set D here. Okay. So if I integrate both of these I'll get the following. There's some constant c such that r is equal to that constant on the set d. Okay, well, what I'm trying to do, remember, is to show that r is identically equal to zero. Okay, so if I can show that this c is zero, then that's essentially enough. Okay, well, we know that r is equal to zero on the boundary of the set D. Now because r is continuous and r is constant on the, I guess, in, on the interior, the only way this can happen it, due to continuity is if this c is zero. Hence, r is identically equal to zero on this uh, union. That is, um, v and w are one and the same solution. Hence, at most, one solution exists. Okay, so I've just squeezed it in there now. Okay. So this is quite common for uh, the proofs when you're asked to show that a, a certain problem has at most one solution. You assume there are two and then you look at their difference uh, in some way and then you show that the um, the, the new boundary value problem, if you like, that we constructed down here um, has only the, the zero solution. Now what this um, conclusion doesn't tell you is whether or not the original problem actually has a, a solution. Okay, that's, that's, uh, th those techniques are, uh, although that question is answered by other techniques. Okay, what it does tell you though is if you can find a solution then it's the only one. Now, a, a little bit of uh, generalization. You don't need, I mean, this is a Laplacian, you don't need to have a zero on the right hand side. You can have, say, a f of x, comma, y, uh, Poisson's equation. And you can rerun the proof, okay? Um, and, and a good exercise might be to work through it and show that the, the result is still valid. Now, there are some other um, applications. The, uh, here we're working in the plane, but you can get this result for, you know, uh, for when u depends on n variables. Okay, it, it, uh, it's not uh, a big deal and Green's um, identity works for you know, any number of dimensions so that's another way to take uh, this, uh, these ideas and, and generalize them. Now the, um, if you change the boundary conditions, what happens? Well, um, it's not quite as straightforward. You could theoretically replace um, this with say something like this dot product which is known as a um, 
Neumann type boundary condition. But the conclusion isn't quite as strong as this, and I'll be talking about this uh, in other videos. But if you want to just go through and replace this with basically, um, uh, sorry, replace this with u uh, dotted with n, where n is a unit uh, outward pointing normal vector to the, the, the boundary. Okay, well, I hope you found this, this video interesting. I hope you found it useful. In other videos, we'll be continuing some applications of Green's first identity. I hope you can join me for those presentations.